for checking out another one of my videos. I'm finally back on the road. As you saw in my last episode, I am so happy. And I'm here in this absolutely amazing location. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, hardly any wind. Last night was super windy. I'm just cleaning up camp, getting on my dog poop. And we're heading north. Camp Fortunate, looking for Clark. As the sun rose over their camp on the morning of the 17th of August, 1805, Captain Meriwether Lewis dispatched his interpreter, George Rulliard, downstream to search for Captain William Clark and the rest of the expedition. Lewis had spent a restless night worried over the fate of Clark and the rest of the party. During the week before, Lewis and three men went ahead of the slow-moving canoes. They found the Shoshone camped on a river over the mountains to the west in a present-day Idaho. Returning on the evening of the 16th with a small party from the village, they made their camp just below the forks, expecting to meet Clark, the chief, with red hair. They nervously waited in the pre-dawn light. As Drulliard prepared to ride, the Shoshone chief, Kamo 
wait, I probably am butchering this, concerned for the safety of his people, sent several of his men to accompany Druilliard in his search for Clark. The Shoshone had been reluctant to follow the strangers in fear that they were being led into a trap. Lewis assured them Clark would be there with trade items. He desperately needed their help and hoped to procure horses from them in order to continue his journey. His focus now turned on holding their confidence. If they did not find Clark as he had promised, the Shoshone would leave. Reunited at last, Juilliard and the warriors rode less than two miles downstream when they found the men dragging the canoes over a gravel bar. Captain Clark had heard the Shoshone warriors singing before they came into view. Sacagawea, walking in the front of everyone, recognized the riders as those of her tribe, the Akadika, or salmon eaters. In her excitement, she looked back at Clark and began to dance and suck her fingers, indicating in sign language that these were her people. As Clark, Sacagawea, and her husband, Charbono, entered camp, Camp, Lewis, Camelweight, and the rest of the Shoshone gathered to greet them. From this small waiting party, an excited young woman ran to embrace Sacagawea. Five years earlier, two young girls had been captured in a raid. One escaped and was able to return to her people, while the other had been taken to the Mandan villages, where she would become a vital member of the Corps of Discovery. Today, when the wind blows from the west, you can close your eyes and still hear the cries of joy. Best friends reunited at last. I hope you enjoyed that. I probably butchered those names and I do apologize in advance. Please don't judge me harshly. I did the best I could. <laughs> the place that I stayed last night is filled with history with the Lewis and Clark expedition. In fact, this location is a vital point where Sacagawea um, helped Lewis and Clark with dealing with the Shoshone Indian tribe. So I just thought that that was really cool. I hope you enjoyed that little tidbit of history. I probably butchered a lot of the names, so I do apologize. <laughs> I did the best I could. But uh, so the plan for the next couple of videos um, is going to be uh, me doing a loop from Idaho Falls to where I'm at now to Montana or to to Glacier up to Spokane down through Oregon and back to Boise where I plan to pick up my mom and we're going to go backpacking in the Sawtooth before I hit the road back to Kentucky for just a brief period of time. Um, I have to get my car registered and it requires a sheriff's vi of inspection. So I have to be present, which is kind of a total bummer. It's not kind of total bummer, but we're gonna make the absolute best of it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited about the next couple of weeks on the road. I think it's gonna be a lot of miles put in in this new truck, which is doing great. The camper is doing great. Uh, the dogs are doing great. We're all just really happy and really thankful to be back on the road. I'm about to get diesel for the first time. Why are there so many options? What, 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 what? Why are there so many diesel options? Okay, so I've got nothing but time. I'm in no hurry, I can do whatever the heck I want. So what I wanna do is drive the scenic byway through the Pioneer Mountains in Montana, because I absolutely am in love with this area. And then we'll go to Butte and get groceries, even though I just went to a uh, Safeway. Uh, well, I, st I saw a Safeway, I didn't go there. So can I just say that Montana is awesome and it feels like home and can I just tell you that you can buy guns and ammo in a gas station? Now some of y'all might not like that, but I just think that's funny. <laughs> I am starting the scenic byway through the Pioneer Mountains and I am absolutely in love with the road coming in y'all. Like I could literally live here. <laughs> so here's the start, there's cows. That would be like my dream ranch um, with this massive view of in all this land, I would not have cows. I would have a horse rescue and all my dogs plus some rescues. And I want a horse because I want to go on all those horse backpacking trips. But look at this. I'm entering. I'm entering grizzly country. Look, the Pioneer Mountains. Be bear aware. We are in grizzly country, my friends. So here's a little bit of information on uh, the pioneers. So in July 8th, 1806, just over 200 years ago, the dogs do not like cows. 
I just got into the Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest and it is gorgeous and there's a hot springs up here. Maybe I'll check it out. Well, they killed my dream. The road's closed and I don't feel comfortable taking this rig up this other road that you can take on that's like super narrow. I literally had to reverse like a quarter of a mile. So I guess we're not doing the scenic highway all the way up to Butte. So unfortunately the scenic byway was closed so I was not able to go the whole way on the scenic byway which is really unfortunate because it was gorgeous what I was able to see. So I am back on the uh, main road here working my way back towards Butte, Montana. Um, I did not follow my GPS. I wanted to take the um, less traveled roads. So here I am at this amazing historical marker. There's a little pathway right there with a plaque and I'm gonna go down there and take a look at that and read that plaque and see what happened in this location many, many years ago. But oh my gosh, can you see this beautiful mountain range right there? It is gorgeous, it's a beautiful day. I'm just so happy even though I was not able to take the scenic byway all the way through. You know what, adapt and be resilient resilient that is the key and that's what we're doing so let's go take a look at this historic marker and see what happened here several hundred years ago all right historic landscapes endure well, this mountain pass is one of the highest elevations traveled by members of the Lewis and Clark expedition and at this natural scenery you stand in the heartland of western Montana's cattle country since the mid-1800s, Beaverhead County has been home to more cattle than most any other place in America. Headquartered at the foot of the slope before you, the Hamilton Ranch contains portions of the homestead established here in 1800s. That's cool. Today, with the help of the program called Undaunted Stewardship, Ranch preserves its historic sites and takes action designed to maintain the landscape's body and soul. Welcome to a glimpse of the area's ghosts, its life, and its future. Enjoy your visit. How cool! <laughs> Isn't this just incredible? Gosh, could you imagine being Lewis and Clark coming back here? Gosh, it's incredible. It got hot, so I had to take my sweatshirt off, but you know, sometimes taking the route that Google Maps doesn't want you to take is so rewarding, and that's definitely what this uh, little adventure has been very rewarding but you know it's just it's amazing to me how desolate it is out here and, and how wild it is and yet so so peaceful at the same time I don't know it's really weird but I'm really having fun so hope you are too <laughs> It's so pretty here. Look. <sighs> There's just no words to describe how I'm feeling right now. Brutus, doing great. <laughs> Jethro, what are you doing, bud? What you doing? What you doing? So, uh, we're having so much fun. We all have snow. <sighs> Holy crap. <sighs> Guys, I'm in love. I'm in love. Ah! 
A Chipotle, my friends! A Chipotle! We're going, baby! We're going! All right. I made it to Walmart parking lot here in Polson, Montana. I'm not really sure. I think that's where I'm at. Dogs are drinking some water, relaxing, playing with their toys, and I'm going to eat my Chipotle. <laughs> oh, it feels good to not be driving. It has been a very long day of driving, but I have seen some incredible places. Hi, hi. So I'm gonna eat my burrito. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe go see what's around town and, and go from there. But yeah, I'm hungry. I've hardly eaten today. And Jethro's trying, he's really wanting my burrito. Anyways, I'm gonna enjoy and I'll catch up with you all soon.